Welcome students. In the previous session, we discussed introduction to bio molecules. Now, in this session, we will continue with how to analyze chemical constituents, right? So, in the previous session, we discussed like how to do an elemental composition and to find out which elements are found in the living tissue, which elements are found in the non-living tissue, like an earth crust. Now, in this session, if we continue asking the similar type of questions like which type of organic elements are found in the living tissue, let's continue asking the same questions like which type of organic compounds are found in living tissue. Now if this is the question, then we have to do analysis to find out them. For that, we need to take a tissue. Now take a plant tissue, let it be a vegetable or an animal tissue, preferably a soft tissue like a liver tissue. And then we need to grind it with a solvent called trichloroacetic acid. We need to take a plant tissue or animal tissue like a vegetable tissue or liver tissue and grind it in a mortar and pestle using a solvent called trichloroacetic acid. Trichloro it is, right? Acetic acid. So when we grind it in mortar and pestle, we need to grind it in mortar and pestle till we get a thick slurry. After getting a thick paste, now we need to filter it with the help of a cheesecloth or a cotton cloth. Now filter it with the help of cheesecloth or a cotton cloth. Now when we are filtering it through a cheesecloth or cotton cloth, then we will get two fractions, then here is a filtrate. Right? We will get two fractions then. So when you are filtering with the help of that cheesecloth or uh, uh, cotton cloth, the portion which comes down, which gets collected here, means the portion of the cell which mixes up in the acid gets collected in the bottom and this fraction is called as acid soluble pool. And this fraction which gets retained in the cloth itself in the upper portion here it's not able to come down is called it's retaining so it's called retentate. Or you can call it as acid insoluble portion. It's not soluble in water, so that's why it is on the top. It is soluble in trichloroacetic acid, that's why it came to the bottom. Now, scientists, when they try to find out where are the organic molecules, means first they tell that, like an acid soluble pool, they were able to find thousands of organic molecules. So they gave the data, like an acid soluble pool, they found thousands of organic compounds then they also tell that in acid insoluble pool also uh, organic compounds are there thousands of organic compounds are found in the acid insoluble pool and later they tell that in the next sessions they will tell that it's all thousands of uh, you know organic compounds are found in the acid insoluble pool also Organic compounds are found in the acid insoluble pool also. Now what's the difference is the compounds which are found in the acid soluble pool have low molecular weight. Whereas the compounds which are found in the acid insoluble pool have a high molecular weight. Now precisely what do you mean by this low molecular weight and high molecular weight? Low molecular weight means the weight of the compound it, seems it is in the range of 
18 to 800 daltons or it is less than 1000 daltons whereas the molecular weight of these organic compounds which are present in the acid insoluble pool uh, their molecular weight weight is high molecular weight how much it is it is more than you know it's more than 10,000 daltons it's more than 10,000 daltons so this is uh, the experiment we have done to find out which type of organic chemicals are found here Just one. In the higher classes, we will learn how to analyze these compounds. Now, ultimately what we need to do is, we need to isolate a compound. And we need to separate it from other substances. We need to separate it and it means to purify it. So in higher classes we have, we learn about many tools and techniques, how to isolate a compound, how to separate it, different separation techniques like gel electrophy, chromatography, ultra centrifugation methods are there, we will study it in higher classes. So we need to isolate a compound, we need to separate it from the other organic compounds and we need to purify the compound and then after that if we do elemental analysis if we do analytical techniques so through this analytical techniques we can derive the molecular formula we can derive the molecular formula and even the probable structure of that organic compound also. Now through this experiment we came to know that how many organic compounds are present in a living tissue. Thus we can tell that all the carbon compounds which are present in the living tissue are called as biomolecules. Now finally we got a definition. So for what are biomolecules the NCRT says that all the carbon compounds present in living tissue scon or archon biomolecules this is what the NCRT tells now this is the story of organic compounds now if you have to find out the inorganic compounds for doing uh, the composition of inorganic compounds we need to do a destructive experiment so then a slightly different destructive experiment to be done to find out the inorganic compounds. For that they are asking us to take a plant tissue or animal tissue. So take a plant or animal tissue. And weight that come that becomes the fresh weight of a compound. Now then completely dry it and then again weigh it, that becomes the dry weight of a compound. So after taking the dry weight, then we need to keep it in a glass bowl. We need to take it in a glass bowl and do combustion. Combustion means burn the compound. When we do combustion, all the organic matter which is present in this tissue, you know, it gets converted into carbon dioxide and water vapor and it evaporates out. 
when we do combustion for this dry tissue what happens all the carbon compounds organic compounds means get evaporated as carbon dioxide and water and what remains in the glass bowl is called as ash and this ash constitutes the inorganic elements and these inorganic elements we know which are present in the living tissue includes carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen sulfur so similarly all these are the compounds now if we see if it is a in a chemistry point of view a chemist identifies uh, like not only these things we find them as sulfates and phosphates also now a chemist identifies these molecular formulas as aldehydes and ketones whereas aldehyde ketones like that whereas if you go with a biologist a biologist identifies the compounds as amino acids we identify them as amino acids we identify them as bases and nucleotides so this is about how to analyze the topic we finished topic number 9.1 in the chapter by molecules now after that the next para which immediately starts explains about amino acids so let's discuss about amino acids amino acids what are they amino acids are the building blocks of protein molecules so our next topic is about amino acids amino acids as i told they are monomeric units when they combine together or if they are joined by peptide bonds they will make a protein particle let's start with amino acids it's about amino acids as the name tells so it is having an amino group it is having an acid group so amino acids as i told they are monomers of a protein means amino acids are joined by which bond so this bond is a peptide bond to make a polypeptide or a protein molecule so they are monomers and chemically we call amino acids as substituted methanes they are substituted methanes what do you mean by substituted methane if you take a carbon if it is surrounded by four hydrogens then it is called as a methane molecule now since we are calling amino acids as substituted methanes we need to substitute so we will substitute one hydrogen with a carboxylic group because it is an acid we will substitute another hydrogen with an amino group and we will substitute another carbon with a variable group which is the r group which is the r group and we know in chemistry we study to the carbon where the functional group is attached is called as alpha carbon that's why we call amino acids as alpha amino acids they are called as alpha amino acids since both the amino group and carboxylic group both the functional groups are attached to the same carbon we call them as amino acids alpha amino acids okay and these amino acids there are more than 300 amino acids in nature but those amino acids which are found in proteins are only 20 and that means we will tell there are only 
twenty proteinaceous amino acids. Even though there are three hundred amino acids in nature, but those amino acids which makes up the proteins are only twenty in number. There are only twenty amino acids which are seen in the protein molecules and in the figure. Nine point one. In the figure nine point one, if you carefully see the NCERT textbook, they have given the structures of three amino acids. Let us see the structures of three amino acids. The first amino acid, which is the basic amino acid, which is the simplest amino acid, which is the polar amino acid, is called as glycine. So then, the twenty amino acids, how do they differ from each other? Means they differ with the structure of R group. Okay, so all Twenty amino acids have different R groups, and what do you mean by R group? R group is a variable group. Now, if the R group is hydrogen, then hydrogen is the simplest uh, substituent. Then we shall call it as a glycine. And if the R group is methyl group, then we'll call the amino acid as the next amino acid alanine, glycine. And if the R group is hydroxy methyl, then we'll call the amino acid as serine. Only these three amino acid structures are mentioned in our textbook: glycine, alanine, and serine. Let's draw them, and the remaining structures we'll see it in lecture number three. Okay, so we'll draw the structure of glycine. So the structure of glycine here is an amino group, and this is an alpha carbon. Here is an acid group. Here we have hydrogen here, and I told the R group for glycine is hydrogen. So let's keep. Hydrogen here, then it becomes glycine. The three-letter code of glycine is GLY, and the single-letter code is G. The second one, the R group is alanine. So let's repeat. Let's take an amino group with an alpha carbon, carboxylic group. Let one hydrogen be there. Now the R group, we need to write CH three group here. So I'm doing that. Then it becomes alanine. The three-letter code is ALA, and the single-letter code is A. And the third amino acid we told the R group is CH2OH, that is serine. So let us do it here. See, it is serine. So take the amino group, an alpha carbon, carboxylic group, a hydrogen is here, and then the R group, as I told, it is hydroxy methyl. And the three-letter code is S E R, and the single-letter code is S. So we have seen the basic structures of three amino acids, which they have mentioned in the NCERT textbook. Now, in the next video, we will continue with the remaining topics of amino acids. What are acidic amino acids? What are basic amino acids? What are neutral amino acids? What are aliphatic amino acids? Aromatic amino acids? What are essential amino acids? Non-essential amino acids? What is the cationic stage? What is the anionic stage? What is the zwitteronic stage? All that we'll see it in the next session. So in this session, we have done elemental composition. We have seen and how to find out the organic element composition. We have seen and then we started with the exact biomolecules. We started with the simpler one. We started with the simple monomeric unit. That's amino acid, and we have seen the basic information, right? If you uh, like the videos, then share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.